Okay, so this, just a couple quick questions, okay, you guys? Um, solving equations with logarithmic, uh, logarithmic equations or rational exponents. And what I want to just show you, just, I'm just going to do qu two quick problems, is some things to look for. So here's the first one. If we try to solve this, we have 2 to the power of 3x minus 1 is equal to 1 half. So this one looks kind of weird, but if you think about this another way, that if we had, right, this is how my brain's working. I'm like, you know what? Isn't one half the same as two to the negative first power, right? So we learned, we learned that in, uh, I guess, algebra two. We said, well, a to the negative n is equal to one over a to the positive nth power, isn't it? So what I'm, all I'm doing is saying reflexively, this is true backwards. And why would I want to do that? Because look what happens now. If I substitute, take this value out here, this one-half value out here, and I substitute it for an equivalent value, which is 2 to the negative one-half power, look, I have same bases. And then all I have to do is get their exponential values to be equal, right? So what I can do from here, this problem is solved now. This problem becomes really an easy linear problem here. We have 3x minus 1 is equal to negative 1. The three, this 3x minus 1 is this one, and this negative 1 is this negative 1, right? Start solving. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 1 to both sides. And we get 3x is equal to 0. x is equal to 0. And think about that. Isn't that true? Look, 3, if x is 0, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So 2 to the negative 1 is equal to 2 to the negative 1. Isn't that right? And if you wanted to do that, let's do it this way, right? Let's go back to the original and say, well, is that true? So here's the 1 half we started with, isn't it? Here's the one half. We said x is 0 by solving. We get 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So we, that would turn into 2 to the negative first power, wouldn't it? And using this rule here that we have from algebra 2, say, so you know what? If this is true here, I can just take that and say an equivalent form of 2 to the negative first power is 1 half. And 1 half equals 1 half. Okay? So... Uh, not difficult, not easy, but not difficult. I mean, this is really doable. You just have to have a couple things in mind, some strategies. And here's another strategy that, that you can use. Uh, this bothers people. And this one gets a little bit tricky because you have to follow, follow your math. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, take the common log. Uh, and I'm going to do this in colors if you don't mind. The square root of x is equal to common log of x minus 6. Now we know here that th it, this is a common log, therefore this is log base 10 and log base 10. So we can just take these logs out and so I've heard some of you say divide by log of 10. That's not really what's happening, but if you multiply both sides by the same thing, you can take those pieces out, etc. So you can take this out. So what we, the problem that we really have remaining is just this bit here and this bit here. So we have the square root of x is equal to x minus 6, right? And then we start solving this, right? Now we're just finally back to some simple algebra, right? If, if we square this side to get rid of this, then we have to square this side, right? So we get x is equal to, and if we FOIL this out, we get x squared minus 12x plus 36, right? Plus 36. Now, you might try to start solving this in the form it's in right now. It's not what I would do. This is, right, we look at this, and Right, this is the algebra part of this, that we have to recognize patterns, recognize that this is squared, right? And when we solve quadratics, we usually set them to zero. So what we're going to do here is set this thing to zero by adding negative x to both sides. And now we get x squared, negative 12x is minus another x is negative 13x's, isn't it? Plus 36 is equal to zero. Now we can factor this again and solve, right? And this fact, <laughs> oh god. Don't let this... Oh, okay, I'm good. I'm good, okay. Um, X minus 4, right? X minus 9, right? I know that negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36, and that negative 4 plus negative 9 is our negative 13, isn't it? Equals 0. Solve these out, so X is equal to 4. X is equal to 9. Okay, so the... Be What's not happening probably right now that should be is that a flag should be raising right now and a bell should be ringing. You should say, is this going to be okay? So we can try this. Let's try this. Let's, right? So plug in. So let's plug in these solutions and see what happens here. Plug in the solutions. So let's try that. 
but it says x is 9, so we'll go up here and we'll say 9. Whoops. 9. We'll put 9 in here. 9. Right? Square root of 9 is 3, so we'd have log common the common log of 3 is equal to 9 minus 6 is 3. So we'd have the common log of 3 is equal to the common log of 3. That makes perfect sense. So I'm going to take this answer and say yes. Let's try the other one, though. We'll take 4 here, which says, because we know we're going to test x equals 4. 4 here and 4 here. And on this side, right, we'd get something weird, wouldn't we? We'd get, in here we get negative. We have log, the common log of negative 2, which doesn't exist. So therefore, this is an erroneous answer. Erroneous, right? An error, erro, error, erroneous, an erroneous solution. Erroneous solution here. So our only real solution is that one. All right? Okay, I think this works. I mean, it's one of those things, and, and as you solve logarithmic functions, there are just four or five techniques and four or five patterns that I think if you're aware of those patterns, it becomes much easier. So, okay, good work.